Good morning, this is Megan Cleaver and Alex Lupton reporting on the top news story of today, Biomass Fuels. Biomass energy comes from plants such as corn, fast-growing trees, perennial grasses, and energy crops. These crops are made into alternative fuels that provide energy and low emissions into the environment. Different ways to make biomass fuels are fermentation and burning of crops. The benefits of biomass are using up the crop residues, lessening global warming pollution, and adding less sulfur and mercury into the air. The disadvantages for biomass fuels is that it uses up a lot of water and land, which is taking up natural resources, and it is we need crops that are sustainable. Now to Alex with the governmental side of uh, biomass fuels. Thank you, Megan. The government has a lot of tax incentives, programs, credits towards biofuels to encourage the use of biofuels, and I will provide you with a couple examples. As far as infrastructure, the government has a tax credit to expand biofuel use. For example, the average homeowner can install residential fuel equipment and receive a thousand dollar tax credit towards that. The EPA encourages the use of biofuels and has the main goal of using 36 billion gallons of biofuels into transportation fuels by 2022. The EPA also reports every three years about biofuels to make sure that we are on a sustainable path as far as water conservation, soil conservation, and overall environmental health. This just in, Tom and Alex in the field with new reports on biodiesel. When considering alternatives to traditional oil, it's important to remember bio oils. These oils can be formed into fuels such as biodiesel. Biodiesel is very important because it can be mixed with traditional diesel in forms such as B20 and B50, which B20 being 20% biodiesel and B50 being 50% biodiesel. It's important to recognize the costs associated with this. The life cycle production and use of biodiesel produces approximately 80% less carbon dioxide emissions and almost 100% less sulfur dioxide. Combustion of biodiesel alone provides over a 90% reduction in total unburned hydrocarbons and a 75-90% to 90 reduction in aromatic hydrocarbons. Biodiesel further provides significant reductions in particulates and carbon monoxide than petroleum diesel fuel. Biodiesel provides a slight increase or decrease in nitrogen oxides depending on the engine family and testing procedures. Based on the AMS mutagenicity tests, biodiesel provides a 90% reduction in cancer risks. Currently, the U.S. uses 18.9 million barrels of oil per day. This is more than China, Japan, and Brazil combined. This is in contrast with the 20,000 barrels of oil produced by bioworks per year. This is due to the high cost, which is associated with the low infrastructure available today. Combined with current government incentives, this will change in the future. Currently, haulers are paying to take bio waste from restaurants in which they go to a dump and pay to dump it. They have an incentive with the current tax incentives to take that bio waste and distill it into their own fuel to use for their fleet. This would cause a micro change that would lead to better infrastructure for the future. Yeah. Now we go back to Alex with more on biomass. There are various incentives programs for uh, use in the conversion of biomass products to energy. Things such as uh, production tax credits, uh, where a two, two cent per kilowatt tax credit for energy generated using biomass products, but, this, but the production tax credit is not a tax deduction to income. Another incentive program is known as the Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System, known as MACRS. MACRS is an accelerated tax depreciation program which assigns a property life duration of seven years to accelerate the depreciation process. Uh, MACRS includes assets used to heat a solid or liquid um, to aid in the conversion of biomass products to heat energy. Uh, MACRS also includes equipment and structures used to store, collect, and receive biomass products. So now let's talk about federally guaranteed financing. The NSACC or the National Sustainable Agricultural Coalition promotes the cultivation of exceptional biomass crops such as sugarcane, timber, poplar, willow, oak, hemp, corn, and sorghum. 
The BCAP is the Biomass Crop Assistance Program, which assists farmers and cultivators in the cost of harvesting, transporting, and storing material in qualified biomass energy heat facilities. BCAP provides a matching payment of roughly $45 per dry ton of biomass. The amount of the payment depends largely on what the biomass is to be used for. Oh, heat, power, or advanced biofuels. Back to you, Megan and Alex. Thank you, Tom and Alex, for that important information. From all of us to you, have a wonderful day.